guys, it's Sally Griswold here. My sister Josie Celio and I are Iron Orchid Designs. And we have been very honored to have been asked to be a part of the Handmade Holidays Blog Hop. What we're going to be making today is a holiday sign, a countdown sign to be exact. I'm really excited to share this project with you. And we're going to be working solely with the decor stamps. Um, from our brand new DIY decor line. So um, let's get started. Let's go ahead and show you from beginning to end how we use the decor stamps. One of the things that I love about these stamps is the scale. We've sized them. They're the largest stamps that you're going to find in the market, which makes them wonderful for decor but they're also fabulous for your crafting projects. As you can see, this project here is a perfect example of that. And you know what? I really like this one right here. What do you guys think of that? I think I'm gonna use this stamp. And what I like to do is I like to lay out the entire design with my stamps so that I get an idea of scale before I actually start my project. It just is a little more combobulated that way. So I think that's going to go right about there. That's where we're going to be putting our, our countdown number really like the way that fills up this area okay and then I've already got this set up on my stamping block so that I didn't have to take up too much time and I think that's gonna go right about there you can see I've got my letters all set up on my stamp block there. Okay, this is the um, the Prima stamp block. It's got a nice handle to it. Feels really good in your hand. It's a nice heavy block, and of course, it's got the wonderful grid lines too. And you'll find that in the links as well. Okay, so I think that's nice right about there. And then we are going to set up the word Christmas. I think this is going to need to move over a wee bit. Okay. And then... stamp block. That is not the technical name, but this is the Iron Orchid Designs Decor Stamp Block by Prima Marketing. And this is a specially sized for our decor stamps. It's a 10 by 12 sized block. Our stamp sets come in 12 by 12, so the larger stamps can be as big as uh, 12 by 12. And um, this was especially designed for that. Okay? And I am going to get the Christmas. I like to stand up so I have even pressure from the top. I'm going to get the Christmas, as many letters as I can. It looks like I'll, I'll be able to fit all the way through the M on this. So I'm going to get that all lined up. Press down, firm, even pressure. And I pick it up. Okay? There we go. Now we've got it all evenly spaced and ready to go. And then we are going to get started with the color. I'm going to be using red and I'm going to be using our decor ink in the color rouge. This uh, decor ink is wonderful. It's washable. You can use it on fabric, on furniture. 
um, on walls. It's just a really fabulous ink. It comes in colors that are um, just on trend for decor and fashion and it comes in 12 different colors. You can mix the colors together after they're washed, they're uh, color fast. You can heat set it to be extra careful, um, but they just come out of the wash beautifully. I've used it to make pillows and all of that fun stuff. By the way, check our feed out on Instagram, iron orchid underscore design, no S on the end. And you'll see some of the pillows that I've made and the different things that we've done with this decor ink and Josie's made too. Okay, so these pads come separately and they come empty of ink so that you can put your ink in the pad and create your own set of ink pads. And what I do, I like to freshen it up even after I have a pad. This is my rouge pad. As you can see, I've already used it, but I really like um, to freshen up the ink even though it's pretty juicy still but I like to just give it a, a fresh coat okay and this is good so that I can actually show you how to do it so you put the ink in the pad like that you do not have to use I have a, um, a wet towel handy to get that ink off my fingers and um, you do not have to Oh, what was I going to say? Oh yes, you don't have to use the ink with the pad. You can use the ink on with a brayer on an acrylic sheet um, and then apply it to the, to the stamps or the project that you're working on. I prefer to use the stamp pads because it's what I'm used to. So after you put the ink on there, you're going to want to work it in because it's a nice um, it's the, the ink is like a gel consistency and that is one of the things I love about it. And then you take, I'm just taking one of my kids old art brushes here, using the tip to just work it in. Like so. Just like that. You can see how it starts to go down into the nice sponge pad. All right, and you set this aside, and now it's ready to go. All right, one of the things you want to keep in mind is, like I said before, you want um, a nice juicy pad. You want to go on there and make sure you have good, even coverage on your letters. There you go. Like so. Okay. Alright. I think we're good. Okay. I'm going to set the, that aside. Again, I like to stand up so I have nice, firm, even pressure from above. And then use my grid here to line it up. Find my line. Remember, I'm eyeballing it from where I remember it being before. Space, because this is where my days until letters are going to be. And watching that pencil line, keep myself nice and straight. Um, one important thing to remember when you're using these stamps is you want something hard and firm that doesn't have give underneath. Now this table has give, but I think I'm okay because the sign I'm actually making is nice thick wood. If it weren't, if it were fabric, I would actually want to use a different table. These plastic uh, tables that uh, many people use for crafts are not ideal for an undersurface when you are using the stamps. Now, I wanted to mention that this board is not a perfectly even surface. And when you're stamping on a surface that is not perfectly even, any stamps you use will leave a possibly uneven impression. So I'm going to show you how to remedy that if, in fact, that 
ends up being the case. We shall see. Okay, and down we go. Nice, firm, even pressure. Also being mindful of a painted surface can sometimes be a little slick, so you don't want to shift your stamp. Firm from above, even pressure, and take your time here. Make sure all, as Betsy, it slipped just a wee bit there. Not too terribly bad. I was paying attention so I didn't go crazy. Um, nice, even pressure. Okay. Now I think that that took just fine. Yes, it did. Beautiful. So um, I may be able to show you how to remedy that issue if that happens on another area of the sign. If not, I can just talk about it. Okay. So now. I'm going to remove these off of the stamp block and set them aside. Uh, let's see, I should have had a paper towel ready. I will set them aside, being careful not to get the ink on anything. Okay, you'll notice the ink has kind of a um, beating up effect that's because of the surface that it went on. When it goes on fabric, it's going to take to the fabric uh, depending on the sheen and the uh, nub of the fabric, the texture of the fabric. It's going to take on different things differently. I actually really like the way this ends up looking when it's dry. It has a watercolory effect that I'm really happy with. But it's really fun to use the stamps on different surfaces play around with them and see what you end up with. Okay, now we need to do the A and the S. So, set that place, put them in place here. Okay, there we go. And let me lay that out. Perfect. I love it. Now I'm going to pick that up with my block. Set that over there. Let's see. I'm using the grid on the block. Oops. I didn't pick that one up. You know what? I'm just going to put it next to it. <laughs> Using the grid on the block to um, line everything up. That's what makes those really handy. So I'm paying attention to the lines, how they meet with the tops and the bottoms so that when I go to press it in I can make sure that these letters are lined up with this and everything stays nice and straight and in place. Okay? Alright. Let me just ink these up. There we go. All right. Now these are still going to be wet for a while. So be careful as you are stamping not to uh, smudge those. And here we go. And down. Oops, slipped a little bit there. Nice even pressure. Making sure all the areas are touching and lift. Beautiful. I love it. Love the way that came out. Um, moving on. Now I've got this one, if you guys remember, already set up on my block. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Days until. So let's ink it up. 
one thing I really like about the stamps is they're much speedier. You know, their um, stencils definitely have their purpose and stamps have their purpose. So different tools for different jobs, right? One thing I like about the stamps is that um, they're just a little quicker. And when you're doing words, I feel like stamps are a more preferable choice. Okay, and I'm just gonna, this is all ready to go. Now remember, uneven surface, I'm not sure how this is going to take. And we are gonna go with it, and I will show you what to do if it doesn't. Uh oh, somebody needs me. But we're gonna finish this first. <laughs> hold on, honey. Okay, sweetie, hold on one second. Oh, you know what? I did that a little bit, just a wee bit crooked, but it is what it is. I was a little distracted because of the little tiny person who needs me. Nice, firm, even pressure. It looks like it's making contact, but I won't know until I lift. Actually, this area down here looks like it It might not be. I'm not sure. Pressing, pressing. I'll be right there. You want to get down? Okay. All right. Now we're going to lift. Ah, oh, yeah, see? The center part didn't take. I'm going to show you, I'm going to go help her, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what to do when your stamps do that on an uneven surface so that you can do projects on any kind of um, surface that may be a little bit uneven. Okay? Okay. I am back and I want to show you how to fix those persnickety surfaces. Okay, I'm going to just, because I stepped away, you don't have to re-ink your stamp. I'm only doing that because I actually had to step away for a minute, and I'm not sure how much they dried. So, these ones on each letter, except for the A and the L, um, it looks like they need to be fixed. So, I simply take them right off the block. I'm going to move just a wee bit here so you guys can see and I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. So I take the stamp off the block move that out of the way. Okay. And I just place it on there. And then I gently hold it as I tap. Okay? And that is how you fix any missing areas. Christmas. What are we missing? We're missing the little chalkboard area right here that we are going to fill in the number of days. Let's place it using the same technique we did before and press down and lift and remove. Now, because I'm working with spray paint, in fact, let me grab that spray paint. This is chalkboard spray paint. I would not recommend it for, for this type of a project at all. Um, but again, it just happens to be what I have. So I'm giving it a good shake. And I am going to, I used um, this cut here to make just a quick stencil and then I'm going to use a simple glue stick 
to um, make the stencil stick to the board nicely. So just let's let that dry and then I will come back and show you how to finish up the project. While this was drying, I took all of my letter stamps um, and washed the ink off of them. They're actually soaking right now in hot soapy water. And then I'll go back later and rinse them off and put them back in their sets. So I am actually going to show you, show you how to use the Brayer, the IOD um, Decor Ink Applicator Tool. And um, it's not a Brayer. I don't know why I call it a Brayer. <laughs> it rolls like one. That's about it. And inside um, comes the acrylic sheet. So I'll show you really quick how that works. So that gives us an opportunity to do that. All right. So shake the ink very, very well, especially the white. The white, um, because of the way the pigment settles, um, tends to need to be shaken even better. So this is the soft black. I decided to go with a soft black color for the wreath around my chalkboard circle here. Alrighty. Okay, I think that's shaken pretty well. Then I just put a nice little circle of color right there. Okay. Just like so. Now, you do not have to use our decor inks with our stamps. You can use chalk paint. Um, you can use other kinds of inks. Uh, they can work with all kinds of different mediums. Um, the decor ink is great for different projects depending on what you're doing. So you just want to use the right medium for the project that you're doing. All right, I think I've got that nice and juicy. I'm going to lay my stamp on my um, block just while I ink it up. And I was going to juice it up again, the applicator tool, but I think, yeah, we'll be fine. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm just doing, remember, I'm just doing the one side and I don't want this, so I'm going to take that off. Alright, don't want that, so I'm just using my finger. You could be better and use... Um, you're going to want to have a red, a wet rag, not a red rag, a wet rag nearby to keep your fingers clean because otherwise what happens is you get these little kind of little smudgies when you're not being careful um, on your project so I just like to keep my hands nice and clean and also it's handy to see how I got some black paint on my stamp block there ink I'm ink rather it's nice to just kind of wipe that off so you don't take the chance of it getting on your project it usually won't um, because it's set back in but just just to be safe all right so we've got that we've applied it the color and you know, maybe I will use the block. I think I am going to use the block, and I can always come in and and uh, fill in if it doesn't take exactly how I want it. I can fill it in later. So I'm going to be I'm going to use the block because it's all set up there, nice and ready to go. So it's tempting me. There we go. and lift. I like that. I like that a lot and it actually took really nicely. So I'm not going to have to take it off the block. I'm going to um, I'm going to just leave it on and do the other side. Alright. Beautiful. And here we go. Other side. Again, I'm just wanting the wreath so I'm getting kind of picky in there. There we go. Okay. And let's do that other side. OK. 
Okay. Oh, you know what? That was almost a mistake. I need to take the ink off of this other side. Otherwise, it's going to get on my project when I do the, when I stamp this side. So I've got to get that ink off there, off of the stamp. Okay. Also, I'll clean that edge up. Okay. All right. I think we're good. I think we've got it. Okay. Again, taking my time, pressing firmly. Looks like it's taking on all the areas. Make sure that part gets down and lift. I like it. I feel really good about that. I don't think I need to clean it up at all. I think that looks really good. I do want a nice center piece right there, so I'm going to do that. I am going to use the center area to create create that um, bottom design that I really like from this wreath. So you can see how this allows you, um, you really can customize these stamps to exactly what you need them for. Um, the, it really stretches and the stamps go a long way because of that. Really like the way that turned out. Okay, so in this circumstance, you actually, I don't have one handy. Um, this one, I don't think this one would work. Let me see. Um, you, a paintbrush would work better. Mm, yeah, that's iffy. A nice soft paintbrush would work nicely, but I'm going to have to use the brayer. I'm sorry, the applicator. I keep calling it a brayer. And I'm, this is, as you can see, this is not the ideal tool. A little um, sponge, a little tiny sponge would work, or something like that when you get into the really detailed, smaller things that you want to do. So, alrighty. So that'll be good. All right. And then I'm going to just softly lay this down. Just like that. I like that. That adds a nice little feature to it. So I found the design that I want to use. All right, just this little simple design to fill in these two spaces here and bring in the black color to balance out the sign. Very, very happy with this. Very, very pleased. Let me turn it around so that you guys can see it. There it is. Days until Christmas. We're going to write that in there. I'm going to do a little more distressing and some final touches, and then um, I will give you a look see. Mm -hmm. 